Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat here, and uh, this is part three of our ID machining in the Prototrack RLX control. And what we're going to do today is show you how to do an inside cycle event. Even though we have a boring cycle that we can use to just bore apart from one diameter to another, most of the time we use the inside cycle because it'll allow us to have multiple cuts to rough it out and then finish it to that size. It also allows us to add things like multiple steps or to have a uh, chamfer or radius or something in there as well, okay? So to get started, we're at the main screen and I do want to remind you once again that we covered how to do the tool setup in part one of this segment, but right now we're going to go over that uh, and, and just skip that part and go right into the programming structure, okay? So I'm going to hit the mode key here and I'm going to go to the program mode. And in here I'm going to skip the name of the part and just go to the beginning. So what we're looking for is a cycle event. And once again I want to explain that what a cycle event is, it lets me describe everything from what I have to start with for either my material size or the hole that's in my material, all the way to the size of the finished part. So what I've got is I've got a piece of aluminum that's in my chuck. It's got a hole already bored into it that's three and five sixteenths. Okay, so we're gonna go to cycle right away. And I always start out with the beginning of the finished dimensions. Okay, so it's almost like you program it backwards. We're gonna start with the finished part. We're gonna end up with the size of the board hole that I have right now. So we wanna put a chamfer on the outside of this. So we're gonna start at three inches, 500 thousandths. Okay, so 3.5. Our Z is going to start at Z0, and then here it's asking me for the depth of pass. Again, I want to remind you that if I use the help key, I can switch to number of passes, but it makes more sense to be able to control the size of my actual rough cut. So I'm going to say no here, and I'm just going to go to the depth of pass and say that I want to do 25 thousandths, okay? Or 20 thousandths is good enough. Then it says, what's your approach going to be? So it's asking me whether I want to use the X or the Z. We're going to do our machining with the Z to rough, so I'm going to select Z. And here it's asking me whether I want to use RPM or surface footage. I prefer to machine with surface footage, so I'm going to put this at 400 surface feet. Uh, it's asking me my thousands per rev, or it's asking me if I want to use inches per minute. I'm going to stick to thousands per rev, and because I'm doing inside work, which the boring bars and things are a little bit uh, less uh, rigid than they are when I'm doing outside work, I'm going to keep this a little smaller, okay? So I'm going to go to uh, just to a five thousands per revolution cut. I'm going to use tool number three because that's how my tools are already set up. And then on my finish cut, if I use my help key, I want to remind you again that I can have a separate Z finish cut from the boring finish cut. Okay, so I'm going to say yes to that, which gives me two finish cuts. My first one I'm going to put at 10 thousandths. And my last one I'm only going to put at two. <clears throat> okay, so now, now that I have that, it's asking me what about your feeds and speeds for the finish cut alone. I'm going to keep this constant by using 400 surface foot. I'm going to break this down to three thousandths per revolution, okay? And I'm still going to use tool number three. So that's the beginning part, all right? If I look from the look screen, all you're going to see is the center line of your part where your XZ zero is, and that green dot is showing where I want to begin, okay? So I hit the look button again. My first event is going to be a turning event, and I'm going to come down to my finish bore, which is going to be 3.4, okay? So 3.4 inches, Z is going to say at zero, and here it's asking me if I want to have a chamfer. So I do want to have a chamfer of about 30 thousandths on here. I also want to remind you that in the green box, it's telling you that if I use the incremental set key when I enter the size, it'll turn that chamfer into a radius. But in this case, we want to keep it as is. So 0 0.03, use the absolute key to get the chamfer. You'll see it right there on the left page. It's asking me what I want to do next. So I'm going to do a turning event and I'm going to come down to the size of my hole or the size of my bore, I'm sorry. So I'm already there, I'm at 3.4, so I can use it usually just use ink set, which means don't move it from the last time I answered that question, and tell me what your depth's going to be. We're going to go minus two inches, absolute, and there's no chamfer in here. So if I look so far, you're going to see that there's my chamfer and there's my bore cut, okay? Now what I have to do is I got to come into the size of the hole that I've already prepared to do this work. So it's another turning event. My X is going to go to 3.3125 because that's the size of my bore. My Z, I'm going to use ink set. I also like to think of that as no change. Don't move that dimension from what it was over here. And then there's no chamfer involved. So I'm sitting here and I've got my finished part done. Now what it wants to know is where is all that material? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I wanna position the tool back out to the corner of the part. So I'm gonna say, leave the X where it is, no change, bring the Z back to zero. And when I push the look button, you're gonna see that dotted line is depicting the size of the hole right now. The solid lines are showing the finished part. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close this by pushing end cycle. It says, it's not closed, would you like me to close it for you? And just say yes, 
And if I push look one more time, you'll see there's a dotted line also at the end. So that's where I'm doing the machining, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the mode key to get out of here, and I'm gonna go to the setup mode. Now, if you go in the setup mode and you look at the tool table, you're gonna see what I talked about earlier. There's all my tools set up for doing my work, and we're using tool number three, which is a boring bar, okay? So I can also look in here at the tool path, and if you look in here to see it a little bit better, there's an adjust view, and I can kind of center this in here so you'll see it a little bit better. So let's move it up here and then let's zoom it in. So you'll see that my tool wrap is in here and it starts at the bore that I have now and it cuts out the outside material and then it ends up finishing it. Okay, so everything in there looks good. I can also look at it from, um, from a solid model view, but I think for this point you already know how to use that so I can skip that part as well. So now we're gonna go to the run mode and we're gonna make this part. Okay, so I go to run and I can either start at the beginning or I can start anywhere in the middle. If I had cut this once and needed to make an adjustment to the size, then I would go and start at event one and tell it just to go to the finish cut. In our case, we're gonna start at the very beginning and I always have the ability to push go. And then I also have the ability to use tracking, right? So I'm gonna put a little uh, uh, wire over my switch here so that I can run this with a door open so the video cameras can see what we're doing. But I wanna also make sure you realize that normally it will not run with the door open unless I'm in the tracking position, okay? So here I'm gonna push go like it says. And now it's in the home position, it's ready to go. So it's telling me, hey, make sure tool number three is in there. Turn your spindle on and then either push go or use tracking. You guys know me, I like to use tracking, make sure everything is right, okay? So I'm gonna go to tracking and then I'm gonna turn the spindle on. And then as I dial forward, you're gonna see that it's gonna come into the place that I need to do the machining. And it looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna switch over and let it do the work by itself. So I'm just gonna hit stop, go to CNC, run, and hit go. Now you'll notice that because I'm doing boring work, I'm not using as aggressive of feeds and speeds and things like that, just because the tooling itself isn't as rigid and I wanna end up with a good completed part. On the screen, you'll see that my first rough cut is at 3.330, okay? So it's barely removing anything. The next cut's gonna take a bit more and prepare me for the finished cut. I also have the ability to override my feeds and speeds by simply selecting whether I have feed or speed up here at the top and then can bump it up or down but I'm sure by the next cut, it's gonna be right where I wanna be. Something else I wanna show you is the fact that at any point in here, if I get a bird's nest like I kinda of have right now, I can simply push stop and hit the tracking button, and then I can use my jog stick to move away, but I'm still in the program run mode, as you can see there, right? So now I can track it right back to where I was. Simply push stop again, go to CNC run, and let it take over right where it was to complete the project. So you can see here, it's roughing out the chamfer section and then it's going to do its actual rough cut. So this cut here is going to leave the final finished cut that you need to have. So you notice we're at three inches, 380, which is leaving me 10 thousandths per side for the finish. And this is the finish cut.
And there you have it. So there's our completed part, complete with the chamfer on the front. And you'll notice that because of the video cameras and stuff, I did this all without using any coolant. So normally I'd have my coolant on, it'd work a little better. It'd also help to get the chips out of the way and things. But for the purpose of teaching you, I think it's better to do it this way. In our next segment, we're gonna show you how to do ID grooving and then ID threading. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and if you enjoyed this last video, don't forget to smash the like button, leave a comment, follow along with us. If you want to see the next video, just check this one out over here. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe so you can learn more about us. I'm Tracking Pat, and don't forget to keep on tracking.